Here's a fart coming up, especially for you. There you go. All the best. Bye-bye. Good morning, sweet world, and welcome to the No Dunks Podcast on the Athletic Network. It's Thursday, April 4th, 2024, but this is The Drop. I'm J.E. Skeets here in the Classic Factory, and alongside me, the bearded one, my top shot hot boy, Trey Kirby. Ayo! Ayo! And over yonder, the man making the magic happen, super producer, J.D. Hello. That's super producer, Worldwide Wob. (laughs) Not just producer. Thank Super you. Thank producer you, Appreciate of that. No Dunks and Is This Good and <laughs> No Buffs, which is coming up in mere hours here. You Survivor fans, around 1 p.m. Eastern, TK, JD, and myself breaking down episode six of Survivor 46. Uh, weird episode, Survivor Limbo going mm. on. So we'll get into it. Uh, it's got its own YouTube feed, its own podcast feed, all that good stuff. Uh, and then tomorrow... Because we're doing the drop today, this is our final live show, but we got a fun one premiering at 10 a.m. Eastern on YouTube, obviously turning it into a podcast as well. Film session. Tass and Trey talking with the directors of the basketball documentary Handle With Care, um, the legend of the Nautic Streetball crew. Awesome doc. So you guys will be chopping it up with them. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Can't wait. So let's get into today's basketball content. The drop. Rapid fire fun. You're taking over for Worst of the Week. Yeah, some good candidates this week. Okay, got some nominees. Uh, And we had some insane results in the NBA last night. We're starting today's show with Malachi Flynn. That's right. (laughs) The Pistons bench player, Malachi Flynn, former Raptor, former Nick for a second. (laughs) For a second. Plays for the Pistons. He put up 50 points in a loss to the Hawks last night. His previous career high, 27 Malachi Flynn goes for 50 in the fortress. What? (laughs) How many names would you have named before you got to Malachi Flynn as a random guy who's going to score 50 points? 300? Like, when would it ever come up? It's, yeah, yeah, about that. I'm like, Sadiq Bey, man, that guy had a 50 point game. True. He's a starter. <laughs> like, he yes. played big minutes. He shot threes. Malachi Flynn, though, going for 50. The way I found out about this was in a group chat, Skeets. I was not locked into Pistons Hawks last night. <laughs> what? Sorry, I thought you no were offense. sick of I, yeah, Look, I've took it a lot of Hawks lately. Yeah. I certainly have. Um, but then I see a text. Who was it? Gavin, I yes. think, sent it. I said, Malachi Flynn? I was like, what'd this guy do? A cool dunk? <laughs> that, would, like, that would be surprising to me. Malachi Flynn throwing down a huge dunk. I go to the box score. He didn't start. So I gotta scroll down. Yeah. 50 points you see off the bench joining Jamal Crawford on the Suns and Nick Anderson on the Magic. Guys, that score 50 off the bench. He averages five points per game in his career, so he could go scoreless the next nine games <laughs> and just keep it perfect. This was incredible. Just seeing this happen, like it's on par with me for Ben Uzo getting a triple double in the last game oh. of the season, like for a guy that's a completely random name. And it just shows you how good NBA players are, because I don't know. I guess that if you had asked me before last night, how many NBA players can score 50? I would have been like 50% of them. Hmm. But now I'm like 90% yeah, of them. If yeah. Malachi Flynn's putting up 50 in a game. Incredible. He also had six boards, five assists, a whole bunch of steals in 34 minutes. Yeah, coming off the pine. His name automatically gets added to the list of random guys to score 50 in a game. We are talking your Corey Brewers and your Tony Delks, yeah. and really your Jamal Crawfords, who did it like at 39 years old in the uh, final game of the season. But you see there, this was Tim McMahon tweeting, the lowest career average entering a 50-point game. Malachi Flynn, 5.2. Oh, yeah, Terrence Ross, there's another one. Uh, back in the Raptors doing that one, 7.4, and some other names there. But like, I, I was like, when I saw the WhatsApp uh, message come through, Malachi Flynn, and then you see that it's 50 points, you immediately go, okay, how many threes did he hit? Like, that's what immediately what I thought. I was like, damn, he must have hit 10, 11, 12, like Mm -hmm. maybe more three-pointers. He only had five. This guy was cooking in the mid-range. He was cooking at the rim. A lot of layups. He could have looked at his left hand all night. (laughs) Did you see how many left-handed layups he had? He's got a great left. I then had to check. Hold on. He's not (laughs) left-handed. He's shooting with his right. He was finishing with his left time and time again. And then the way he got 50 was sort of weird at the end. 
Pistons are hanging around. Like, the Hawks got the win. I did yeah. say this came in a loss. But yes. <laughs> they're hanging around, hanging around. You know, he's at 48 because he had just pull, uh, hit a big sort of pull-up three to, like, cut the lead a bit, little bit. And then, um, you know, the Pistons, like, we're like, we got to get back into this. we got to throw, like, a trap sort of at half court. Yeah. They coughed it up, the Hawks did, and they kicked it ahead to Malachi Flynn, and that was points number 49 <laughs> and 50. And, you know, like, it was, like, again, in a loss, but they were still in the game. They were fighting to extend the Definitely. game. So, yeah. like, they needed all 50 to – even make it a game. I think he joined uh, Tony Delk and Corey Brewer as guys who hadn't scored 30 points in a game right. before getting to 50. We also had Jalen Johnson getting his first triple double in this game, so it made me think, oh, yeah. what's going to happen next? Another Jalen Johnson triple double or Malachi Flynn scoring 30 again? I'm not going <laughs> to look. Uh, I don't think he's going to get 50 again no, in an NBA no, game. Not. I'm going to go out on that limb. But 30, but 30, it's possible. It's- they still got some time here. Uh, maybe he gets a start now that we see uh, how much of a microwave scorer he is. But just uh, wild stuff to see Malachi Flynn put up 50. Like, when Sadiq Bey did it, it, it made sense a little bit, right? Like, even Corey Brewer was a number seven draft pick. Like, he was a high pick. Yes. Tony Delk was a great player in college. Malachi Flynn, it felt like he got drafted because he was similar to Fred Van Vliet by the Raptors. It never worked out there. He's been traded around. He hasn't really found his place in the game, but then he goes out for 18 for 25. I didn't really feel like he was ball hogging that much no, either. No. He was taking good shots. Also had five assists, five steals, like clearly the best game of his career. Uh, he said he wasn't going to enjoy it all that much because the Pistons did lose. This is a very Pistons accomplishment. A reserve <laughs> scores 50. Their two other high scorers have 11 points. Their biggest lead is one and they never lead in yeah. the second half of the game. This was very much a Pistons thing going down uh but really cool for him he said he'll enjoy it in a couple of days he said he had never even had a 50 point game in any level of basketball he said in high school he had 49 and his coach took him out (laughs) and he was still pissed about that he could have had 50 in that game I guess but for those that don't know yeah he was the 29th pick in the 2020 draft and he had some bright moments honestly as a rookie for the Raptors but then struggled to find any sort of consistent role. There was always like a small little group of Raptors fans that were convinced this guy was a hooper and should have got more chances. Uh, But, you know, then he gets traded in the OG R.J. Barrett deal there with quickly going, so he's moved to the Knicks. And then he gets traded again, part of the uh, Bogdanovich and Alec Burks trade um, to the Pistons, and that's why he's there. Again, I mean, I think you could have quizzed like actual NBA fans last night before the game. Like, do you know who Malachi Flynn plays for? Do you I know mean, who Malachi Flynn is? You could start with that, and then if they said <laughs> yes, do you know who he plays for? I'm not sure you're going to get a lot of correct answers, but here's my final note on this uh, incredible performance. My buddy Grish, your buddy Grish, our buddy Grish, yeah. he is on a live sports event heater. Let me explain. On Monday night, my buddy Grish is in Houston to watch the Astros pitcher, Ronel Blanco, throw the first no-hitter of the season. Grish is there. He's cheering for the Jays, who got waxed. They got no-node. But, you know, at some point in the seventh, especially eighth inning, you're like, I'm, I'm here. I want to see a no-hitter. Yeah, I would sure, do the same, right? So that happens. Guess where my buddy Grish was last night? He was down at the Fortress <laughs> watching his Pistons lose to the Hawks. But what happens? You get the most random 50-point game in NBA history. I think that's yeah. fair to say. So here is his schedule, guys. He's headed to Cincinnati for a baseball game on Saturday. The guy's a sicko. The guy loves sports. He just wants to check off every stadium and all that. But Saturday, Mets, Reds, my buddy Grish in attendance. Okay. What's going to happen? I I think somebody's going to hit for the cycle or, I mean, look, a perfect game? Yeah. That would be next level. If that happens, then it gets officially creepy. But I was like, I was like, maybe, maybe somebody hits for the cycle. Maybe like somebody steals home, like something like really rare, but like semi-achievable. Yeah. Uh, Fernando Tatis, two grand slams sure. in the same inning. Sure, uh, sure. Mark Witten, isn't that a guy who hit four dingers <laughs> four in a game dingers. once upon a time? Uh, you got to go to a lot of sporting events to see these kind of things happen. Grish is doing it. Did yeah. he order a Malachi Flynn jersey last night? I know that guy <laughs> loves jerseys. <laughs> yeah, he's my, my nephew, or my, not my nephew, my godson will be wearing a Malachi Flynn jersey next time I see him, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, who's the who's the star player on the Reds? Uh, L.A. De La Cruz, the young guy? Oh, yeah. It's He's not got, Chris Sabo anymore. Huh? No, no, no. It's not Sabo. So I think uh, De La Cruz De La is going to go there for go. a hit for the yeah. cycle there on Saturday. Crazy stuff. Any That's other it. notes there on an insane 50-point burger? Well, not specifically about Malachi Flynn, but the Hawks did tie the Bulls for 
technically they're tied yep. in ninth right now in the Eastern Conference. The Bulls, though, have the tiebreaker on the Hawks. They're up 2-1 uh, this season, but the Hawks have definitely been playing better than the Bulls have in the past couple of weeks here. They've won six of their last seven. I think they're second in offense in those seven, seven games, 12th in defense, fifth in net rating. They're peaking right now, and the Bulls are kind of scuffling, winning games that they should lose and losing games that they should win. <laughs> so, selfishly, I wouldn't mind if it keeps up like this, because I'll go down to the play-in tournament with Grish, and we'll see <laughs> somebody break uh, the 100-point game or something yeah, like exactly. that. But it doesn't count, because it's in the in the play-in tournament. Oh, wow. Imagine that. Somebody goes for 101. DeRozan, Beach 101. Record, game winner. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, the Celtics clinched the NBA's best record last night runaway victory against OKC. Now, there's no SGA. There's no J-Dub again. People are starting to wonder, are the Thunder tanking uh, the season away here a little bit? And here's Maybe. what I mean. They don't want the first or second seed because have you seen the teams in the play-in? Like, you could be looking at a, a Curry Warriors. You could be looking at a LeBron Lakers. Hey, you know what would be nice? Maybe that little third slot because they've fallen to the third seed. Anyway, Celtics just, just you know beat the snot out of them. I mean, they, they trailed for like 62 seconds in this game, Boston did. Yeah. And Porzingis was a monster, 27 points, 12 boards, 5 blocks. Uh, great call from Mark Jones on the call. Put Thunder players in the friend zone. That's what Porzingis did on the block. <laughs> great line. They won 135 to 100. And now they have the best record in the NBA. Like, from here on out, nobody can catch them. Home court advantage throughout the playoffs. Yeah, I think JJ also said that it looked like Porzingis was playing against the world's tallest player development coaches, how easily he was scoring <laughs> right. in the lane. Like, Porzingis was great in this game, uh, but I completely believe the conspiracy theory that OKC's trying to game their seeds mm. a little bit here. Obviously, they want to be at full health going in uh, to the playoffs, but they are 1-3 and three against the Lakers and 2-1 and one against New Orleans, 3-0 and oh against Phoenix, and 2-1 and one against Dallas. Maybe they look at that as a more favorable matchup, or maybe they're just preserving their guys. Yeah, but, uh, probably a bit of both. Nonetheless, uh, that's why... When we look at who has the hardest schedules at the end of the season and who plays the most playoff teams and all that kind of stuff, it kind of doesn't matter because you do not know who is going to be suiting up for any of these teams. As for the Celtics, this has got to be the year, right? Like, uh. if it isn't this year, when is it going to happen? They've got the best record in the league. they got 60 yep. wins. Yep. They've got a historic point differential, currently fifth behind four title teams, best in the NBA since KD's first season with the Warriors. Wow. They're healthy. They're healthy. Yeah. They're, They're pretty balanced. Yep. Like, literally the only question mark you would probably Experience. have about the South. Yeah, exactly. Is maybe their bench, right? Like, some of sure. the bench guys aren't quite as established as their starting lineup is, but obviously their starters are going to play a whole bunch. So, I mean, the Celtics are going to be the favorites, certainly in the Eastern Conference. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, they're probably co-favorites with the Nuggets right now, but if it doesn't happen for the Celtics, I don't... Like, what else can they do? Yeah, right. Who could they possibly add to make this team any better? I it doesn't mean, even make sense, so... You'd have to go get talk Phil Jackson out of retirement or something <laughs> to come coach yeah. the team. It's a good point. I mean, I think this is, like... It's going to sound weird to say, but, like, this season for the Celtics, 60 and 16. Yeah. They're, they're very likely going to be, you know, any, a 64, 65, 66-win team here. That's that's a really good team. I feel like it sort of hasn't been talked about all that much, sort of this domination that yeah. you brought up, the net rating and all that. But then you go back over the last couple of years and you think of the teams that have won, let's say, like 64-plus games. Like, that's yeah. rarefied air. You start to get into that. The Suns won 64 games in the 21-22 season. Mm -hmm. That one ended poorly with a Game 7 um like one of the worst performances we ever saw in a Game 7 to the Dallas Mavericks in the second round. The Rockets won 65 games in the 2017-18 season. They lost in seven games in the Western Conference Finals. This is the whole Chris Paul yeah. uh, series and all that. And then before that, the Warriors won 67 games in the 16-17 season. They went on to win the title. Um, I, I just bring that up because the Celtics are going to be a part of that list. I think they're going to have 64, 65 wins. And we're going to see here, is it some upset in a second round or conference finals or is it winning the title or is it losing to the nuggets because nobody can seem to beat them mm -hmm. we're gonna find out here but it's a great point of like what do you do if you don't win this year if you win 65 games you're clearly the number one team in the league you have the depth you have experience uh, like i don't know <laughs> yeah, exactly. i honestly don't know except like all right run it back and hopefully everything breaks right for us the next year but yeah, we'll see. I mean, the Celtics go to the conference finals all the time. Basically, they're yeah. there every single yeah. season since Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown have showed up. But this is domination in the Eastern Conference. The Milwaukee Bucks are 13 
games behind the Celtics Jeez. in the second seed. The Hawks and the Bulls are closer to the Bucks than the Bucks are to the Celtics. Hmm. That's crazy. Wow. I mean, I, I'd i like, what's the biggest gap between the number one seed and the number two seed over the last, let's say, hmm. decade? Has anything but ever been bigger than 13 yeah. games? Which could Doubtful. even Sounds like a Schumann Which stat. could balloon even more? Yeah, yeah, come on, Schumann. He's probably already got that in a I'm power sure, ranking. I'm sure he does, yeah. Uh, all right, so Celtics win. They are the number one seed throughout the postseason. Uh, let's move to uh, one of the more entertaining games. A little weird ending to this, but Paolo Bencaro, 32 points, lifted the magic over the Pelicans. Zion injured his finger in this game. Uh, it looked scary when Gary Harris sort of oh, yeah. slipped trying to poke the ball away and took out Zion's legs. He seems okay, thankfully. Um, but then we had three Pelicans players at the end of the game. Did you see this? Oh, yeah. They got ejected in the final, like, eight seconds of the game. Game's over. Like, I mean, it's it's done. Uh, yeah. Ben Carroll had put it away. Herb Jones, Trey Murphy the third, and then Dyson Daniels all got tossed, like, one after another for saying stuff to the ref, complaining to the ref. I think I forget who the official was, but they had a they were a temper boy there last night. They were like, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, seven seconds left, and they're like, we can't take this anymore. I, uh, maybe one guy maybe deserves one to get guy, ejected, yeah. and then you're like, okay, we'll calm down. But uh, yeah, Herb tossed, Trey tossed, and then I feel like it was maybe 45 seconds until Dyson Daniels got in the mix and he got tossed as well. It was a pretty physical game. Uh, both sides were complaining. There were technicals earlier for uh, players complaining about uh, missed calls. And yeah. then, you know, I mean, the Zion and Gary Harris thing was probably just leaves a bad taste, certainly in the Pelicans' mouth. And yeah. then I think they're not getting calls down the stretch. But uh, these two teams are a cool matchup for each other because <laughs> they play kind of similar yeah. with a lot of size on both sides. They both want to get to the basket for the most part. And then you got a big, huge playmaking dude who handles the ball on both sides in Zion and Paolo. And I thought Paolo was so good in this one. Yeah. Had a sick dunk, had a Euro, and dunked it right on top of Herb Jones's head. Herb? Just called him Herb? <laughs> herbs and spices. Herber, yeah, herbs and spices. <laughs> Only Orlando's third win over a 500 team since the All-Star break. They've had a pretty easy schedule, yeah. which is why they're doing so well uh, in the standings. But they really took care of business. Paolo was awesome. Franz, I thought, was really great in this one as well. And... I guess the Magic just were able to get over the edge, especially with Zion. I think he sat like the last seven minutes. The good part is that they said he was sitting because of the finger, finger. more so than because of anything that happened with his knee on that Gary Harris play. And that was just a weird play. Like, it looked like he was going for the ball and had a poorly timed slip, yeah. which led to him really chop-blocking Zion. Totally. It could have been so much worse. Yeah. And we're waiting to find out, like, how severe the finger is, which I think he, like, sort of hit on the rim, right, on a on a block attempt, if yeah. I remember correctly. So, and then he said he got hit a bunch more times on the finger. Yeah, it well. was it was physical. I mean, the Magic even talked about it. It was like, that's how we play. Like, we love it. <laughs> they want yeah. to play like a football game, this team. Uh, I'm glad you brought up Franz, though. He did have a good game. 24 points, 8 of 14 shooting, 3 of 6 from deep, 5 assists, 2 boards, and a block. This was one of his best 3-point shooting games since, like, early March. This has sort of gotten overlooked a little bit because I think the, the Magic have had such a great season. You know, where they are seating-wise... Uh, the identity as a defensive-minded team, Paolo sort of blossoming into a star. Franz is shooting 28% from deep this season. Third year, yeah. we sort of expected oh, this would be a, a big sort of like uh, a, a explosion year for this guy, what we saw in international play, and he just hasn't been able to hit the three. So, you know, good game here. Good timing if he can find that shot a little bit, because that's one thing the Magic do need, shooting, three-point shooting. And we would have thought Franz would be sort of one of those guys. But he just had a really bad year from deep. I had him as my most improved player yeah. coming into this season. It definitely feels like he has plateaued. I mean, he's still a really good player. Great at getting into the lane. Has a really uh, tricky package of finishes. Like, when yeah. he gets in the lane, you think he's probably going to score. Uh, but I guess... Three-point shooting is the next thing for him to work on because he said on the J.J. Redick podcast that he's been working on the craft of the pick and roll lately. And you mm -hmm. can tell in the way he plays it, the way he like gets guys on his hip, keeps them in jail, and then explodes to the rim. Uh, my dad told me yesterday that Aaron Rodgers once told Justin Fields, when you're young, you should pick one thing to focus on to improve on every summer. Like during the summer. Yep. And I think that that's the next thing for Franz. All right. Okay. So, so you're going to take it for most improved next year? Just double down? Yeah, why not? Yeah, okay. See, I should have done that because I had last year I had Tyrese Maxey as my most improved player. He didn't win it. If I would have doubled down this year, wow, could have did just, it. You're a year too soon. I'm in on Franz. Yeah. All right, Franz for MIP next year. Uh, New Orleans has lost three straight, four or five. They have slipped from fourth now to seventh in the Western Conference. So they are just a game, or excuse me, half a game in front of uh, eighth place Sacramento. So it's, I mean, we knew that was going to happen. We all, we kept saying this for weeks. You have sort of one bad stretch here, and you could fall 
pretty significantly in the standings. And for the Pelicans right now, you know, no Brandon Ingram and and just like playing you know, playing some good teams here and coming up short. So they've slipped a little bit. But and they're all home losses too, which is kind of disappointing. Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, the Suns, they're going up. They're trending in the right direction. Booker, another 40 points. Suns improved their playoff position 122-101 over the Cavaliers. Uh, just the second time this season that Booker and Durant have both scored at least 30 points in the same game. Uh, Booker 40, KD 32. Suns have won six of the last eight. Yeah, I was surprised to see that that was only the second time this season that they both went over 30 because it feels like they can summon that basically whenever they yeah. want to, and I guess they can. Like They're both averaging about 27 points per game, KD and Booker, but there's not a lot of shots to go around to actually get to that but that's tricky for the Suns because when you think about the Suns going into the playoffs, you're like, they're going to need 30 from Booker and Durant yep. in a lot of these games, probably four times a series. It seems reasonable that they can both do that. We saw it against the Nuggets last year when they combined for 80, basically, in back-to-back games and the ones that they won. Yep. But if they're only doing it twice during an 82-game regular season, maybe there's reasons to be skeptical. But I did think um, the Suns played really well in this one. The Cavs did a good job to at least get back into it in the second half. But this was basically a blowout, and it was pretty much over at the end of halftime. Uh, I don't remember exactly how many Phoenix scored 70-something in the first half, and J.B. Bickerstaff said afterwards, it's really hard to come back from that. And it was. You know, the Cavs were playing from behind the entire time. They just didn't shoot it quite well enough to get in. This was your your classic NBA game where one team goes up 20 to 25 points sort of early, first half. Then in that third quarter, in the second half early, the team that's down puts together a good run, Makes the score respectable for a little bit, and then they run out of gas, right? And then it mm-hmm. balloons once again to like sort of that 20-point lead, and, and that's what happened here. But you watch these games over the last couple of weeks with the Suns, and you this is why you go, ah, I mean, they're going to be very difficult still to beat, either coming out of the play-in or in a playoff series because they've jumped into the actual playoffs now, which is huge for them. Like, you know, because they're so so hot and cold, I like them a lot more in the sixth spot in a series with obviously a good team, one of the top three teams, but then I do of like, hey, one win and you're in type of game. Because they can, yeah, be dominant, but sure. they, we've seen them like put up stinkers. Um, so right now they're in that sixth spot and they would be playing OKC, which would be a tasty first round. That would be interesting Thunder to see. Thunder Suns would be fun. I wonder who the consensus pick would be because Thunder obviously are the better team. Yep. They've got an MVP candidate of their own in SGA and another guy who makes big time shots in Jalen Williams, but they're such a young team. And then you look on the other side and it's all guys who have been around for a long, long time. Kevin Durant's got finals MVPs under his belt. Devin Booker has been there. Yep. Bradley Beal. He has played in the playoffs. <laughs> At least that's something he's got over a lot of these Thunder guys. True. But, uh, I mean, I would probably be taking the Thunder, but we'll see how it plays out down the stretch. I know. We can't even get excited about any potential oh, playoff yeah. matchup because you're like, well, tomorrow it'll be different. Yeah. They'll have a completely different opponent, and then, you know, that'll change the day after. Just too, too jumbled there in the Western Conference. Uh, other games last night, anything you want to touch on? I mean, we had Scoot out-dueling Brandon Miller. He had a good game. Good scoop game, okay. and they got a win to snap a huge losing streak for Portland over the Hornets. AD monster game as they beat the Wizards. The Nets beat the Pacers, 115-111. Um, the Nets are still eliminated from postseason contention, but still, they beat the Pacers. <laughs> yes. Jaron Jackson Jr. and the Grizzlies beat the Bucks. Jaron Jackson Jr.'s balling right now. Yeah. Milwaukee is not. And then uh, Anthony Edwards, Nas Reed, drop your Nas Reeds in the chat. Um, they destroyed the Raptors, 133-85. to 85 to uh, move back into a tie in first place in the West. <laughs> yeah. Any thoughts on it? Uh, I thought this was a bad loss for the Pacers because they dropped into the play-in now against Philadelphia is who they would have to go up against. And obviously Embiid just came back. We'll see how he looks in a couple of weeks here. But one thing I did like from the Pacers side is they really force-fed Siakam late in this one. He went for 15 points on 7 of 11 shooting in the fourth quarter, but he got eight shot attempts in the clutch down the last five minutes, finished six of them. They got him for these kind of moments. Yeah. Somebody who can be an ISO scorer and you can just dump the ball to and hopefully he can get a good shot. He was pretty good in this one. The bad side is that they just couldn't get a stop against the Nets during clutch time and then Obi Toppin had like a brutal turnover and then a really brutal three-point <laughs> shot as well that kind of put the comeback, uh, halted the comeback. Yeah. But um, I do like seeing the Pacers working to get Siakam involved late because there have been a lot of games that I've seen the Pacers uh, give it away in the clutch, and it just feels like they're ignoring Siakam just because they don't really understand quite 
how to fit him in yet. That's probably something that happens over the summer whenever he signs his deal and Rick Carlisle has a chance to draw up offenses that are centered around a point guard in Halliburton and Siakam yeah. rather than like Halliburton centered. Um, so, you know, they lost the battle, but perhaps they'll win the war. Possibly. Uh, and again, the Bucks loss. I didn't see who Doc Rivers threw under the bus. Uh, <laughs> Maybe the bus driver himself. It's possible. Uh, I mean, they lost to the Wizards and the Grizzards yeah. in back-to-back <laughs> nights. It's it's not bad. And if you it's not good. And if you look at the standings here in the Eastern Conference, sort of at the top, the Bucks are only two games up on the Magic. Only really mm-hmm. two and a half up on the Knicks. You know, it, it's it's Milwaukee, Cleveland, Orlando, and New York. Uh, you know, two through five there. We thought Milwaukee like a, a couple weeks ago. We're like, oh, okay, they're clearly the yeah. number two seed. No, they're not. They're not even guaranteed to be hosting uh, a first round series. They probably will still, but it's not not good here. I know, no Damian Lillard again last night. It yeah. looked horrible without. So no Middleton, I think as well. Yeah, yeah. So short guys, but still, we're talking about the. What did you call them? The the Wizards and the Grizzards? The Wizards and the Grizzards. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. Uh, you would like to be peaking right now. Yeah. Uh, or maybe they're trying to game some seeds, too. I don't know exactly who they would be aiming for to play <laughs> in the first round, because if they dropped a three, they would be playing against the Heat. That didn't go well in the last first no, round. No, you're right, right. I guess because, yeah, because like we were just saying with OKC, are they like, oh, we don't want to see Embiid mm-hmm. if he comes out of the play-in, or we didn't want to see Miami if they come out of the play-in again. But now Miami's up to six, yeah. You, you can't game the system like that. You, can't you just got to win the, the game, yeah. Stock. You got to win them. Uh, all right, let's move to some uh, Basketball Hall of Fame news. Yesterday, Shams reported that Vince Carter and Chauncey Billups have been elected into the Basketball Hall of Fame class of 2024. There will be more names announced this weekend, part of the Final Four festivities when they do this. Uh, so we'll get the full 2024 class. But these are the, you know, the big NBA names. Shocked at all by the selections, uh, Vince Carter and or Billups? I would say Chauncey Billups is more of a surprise mm-hmm. than Vince Carter is. Vince had such a long career, had such high peaks. Obviously, unlike Chauncey Billups, he never got an NBA championship. Nope. But he was one of the great players, all NBA, several times. Chauncey, though, I do think is a little surprising, though he does have a finals MVP, which matters. I think there's one guy who has a finals MVP, Cornbread Maxwell, who is not in the Hall of Fame. Did Mm. he go in? I don't know. At least that was the stat a while ago. So Vince Carter, I think, certainly deserving. Chauncey's going to be one of those borderline guys, I do believe. Um, uh, But... He was a good player. It's just at a weird time in the league, you know, like the 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 mid two thousands when the Pistons were dominating and people were not the happiest with the way they played in the Eastern. <laughs> but they were like a sort of an Eastern Conference dynasty. Yeah, were sort they? of. I mean, they were always in the Eastern. They were like Conference a. Cel- they were like, like the Celtics. They were yeah, like the Celtics. But they, they got yeah, one. They got through. Yeah. Uh, once upon a time. It's a fair point. Um, it's wild when you think about these two guys. Vince Carter, eight time All Star with the Raptors and Nets, you know, sort of earlier in his career. And then he had a whole, yeah, a whole other decade, uh, you know, bouncing around on Mm -hmm. other teams to become more of a a journeyman to help him score over 25,000 points. He ranks 21st all time Mm -hmm. in points scored. Uh, Ten straight seasons, I think, of 20-plus points per game. But anyway, eight-time All-Star for Vince, only two All-NBA teams. Very shocking. I think that surprises a lot of people. Two of those came in his first three years in the league. This guy played a record 22 seasons. So the All-NBA selections came early. And you compare that to Billups, now five-time All-Star, he made more All-NBA teams. That is weird. Now different positions and all that, but that's that's a little telling to me, you know, with, with Vince. Because both of these guys, look, I've gotten to the point with the Basketball Hall of Fame, it's like they sort of have opened the doors too. It feels like everyone, yeah. honestly, if you were notable and you're memorable and you got a couple All-Stars, a couple All-NBA, if you got a Finals MVP or you got a championship, you're good. Um... Come on in. You know, is it broken? Is it watered down? I mean, it feels like it, if I'm being honest. Like, these two guys, even Vince. I'm a Raptors fan, right? Even Vince. I think if you take away the the journeyman part, like, give him a more normal career of, let's call it, mm-hmm. 15 seasons, and, you know, very little playoff success. I think he only won three first rounds as the main guy. He won one with the Raptors and two with the Nets. You take away that, like, is he making the Hall of Fame or is he helped out by, first off, being extremely likable, Yeah. by, you know, accumulating stats over the final, like, six, seven years of his career and all that. 
And then the same with Billups. Like, you take away the 2004 Finals MVP. It's like, is this enough for these guys? I don't know. It does. They're, they don't scream like first ballot Hall of Famers. I would agree with you. Right? Yeah. Um, but I also think we're going to get a lot of guys from the mid-2000s that are like that. Yeah. At a time when, you know, basketball wasn't at its greatest. And they had to change the rules, basically, to increase scoring in the league. If you were able to score, like, 18 points a game in 2004... Maybe that is Hall of Fame worthy, but I'm kind of with you. Uh, But Vince, I am seeing, did finish 11th in Sixth Man of the Year voting at age 40, so (laughs) that probably helped. Yeah, it's when you look back at the last couple of Hall of Fame um, enshrinements or classes, I guess. 2023, bangers: Dirk, Wade, Pau Gasol, Tony Parker. Right, but then the year before that, that was the Manu Ginobili, Tim Hardaway. You know, great players, good players, but again, that's a le- those are levels down. Mm-hmm. Man who's helped out by the international career yeah. and all that. Year before that, it's Bosch, it's Pierce, and then it's like guys like Ben Wallace and Chris Webber. Again, those borderline guys. The year before that, 2020, it's an all-timer, Kobe, Duncan, and Garnett. But the one before that, you're talking like Vladi, Sidney Moncrief, Paul Westfall, Jack Sikma. Like these, there's like levels to this, right? And then the year before that, it's Grant Hill, Ray Allen, Steve Nash, Jason Kidd. If like, my point is, ups and downs. It, yeah, you got to time bit, your retirements. A little bit, a little bit, and this is a, like a down one. If these are the lead NBA guys, and then you know, there's other guys like we've talked about before. Mitch Richmond felt like he was like a bit of a tipping point one. Yeah. Um, even Tracy McGrady. Yeah. You know, despite the All NBA selections, all the scoring, not a lot of playoff success. I used to get really upset about this. Now I just like, okay, it is what it is. I'll see your speech. Yeah, I'll see your speech. I'll watch you. I liked you. You were a winner in Billups' case, you know. Um, you were memorable in Vince's I mean, you probably kept a franchise in Toronto, for being honest, from what you were doing. Uh, so congratulations. But it is, it's just, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like the Hall of Fame of old. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't. At a certain point, they just were like, hey, come on. Come on, Ellen. You know, come you, hang out. You got, you got five All-Stars. You got a couple All-NBA. That's enough. Yeah. yeah okay. Brings us back to yesterday. Rondo's getting in. <laughs> you know, Rondo's getting in. I mean, as a Lowry fan, and I've said this before, you want Billups to go in. That helps the chances of a guy Definitely, like Kyle Lowry yep. down the line to make it. He's got no finals MVP. He's got the championship, though. He's got more all-star selections, less all-NBA, and he's not going to add to that. So it'll be, uh, you know, a little close. But if Phillips gets in, you look at the numbers, they're pretty comparable. Very similar. They're pretty comparable. But Would we'll you see. rather be nicknamed Mr. Big Shot or Half Man, Half Amazing? They're both incredible nicknames. Great nicknames. Hall of, Hall of Fame nicknames. Jesus. Hall of Names. Which one would I rather be called? Mr. Big Shot's... Pretty. Ah, I mean, Vince also has Air Canada. He's got a lot of great nicknames. Yeah. Vince Sanity is cool. Half man, half amazing is such a good. I'm gonna yeah. go with that one. <laughs> All right, I'll be Mr. Big Shot. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, in other NBA news, just quickly here, uh, the Hornets coach Steve Clifford is stepping down at the end of the season. That's it for Steve. We got Steve Kirby in attendance, and we're hey. talking about Steve Clifford. Um, got my own coach, Steve. Here. Yeah, that's right. Woj reported that Charlotte's new EVP of basketball operations, Jeff Peterson, and the co-owners there, uh, Rick Schnall and Gabe Plotkin, I just love saying those guys' names, uh, were open to bringing back Clifford as the coach next season, but Steve himself wasn't prepared to commit <laughs> to another year of the grind. Sounds like Steve Kirby, who just retired, wasn't committed to another year of the grind. Uh, were you shocked by this? No, at all? no, 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 not at all. It definitely seems like Steve Clifford has been done for a long time. <laughs> the guy was just taking shots as a, at his own team in press conferences like months ago. He's like, everybody can score 16 points a game. Malachi Flynn can score 50 <laughs> points a game. That's a direct quote from Steve Clifford. Uh, but basically, now it's time for him to get out. He said, I just don't see myself in these next few months having the right energy level. I'm just like you. Your best days start when you feel good. Driving in. If you're feeling not at your best, you're not going to have a great day. Oh, boy. He's basically like, I dreaded coming into work every day to coach this team. And can you blame him? He has had a really tough hand dealt here. Yeah. 58 games of LaMelo Ball in the two seasons yeah. that Steve Clifford has been the Hornets coach this the time second around. Time. Yep. Even the way he got the job was kind of weird, right? Like, he was with the Hornets from 2013 to 2018. I think he even coached the Bobcats uh, one yeah. year. Then he went to the Magic from 18 to 21. Then Kenny Atkinson took this Hornets job and said, actually, I would rather stick with the Warriors as an assistant. Oh, so yeah. they brought Steve back um, to hopefully have some sort of an identity. 
and the identity has been just a disaster uh, right. for the Hornets. Nothing good has happened for them uh, in the past two seasons. So it, this just kind of feels like the first step of a house cleaning. We'll see what else happens uh, with their front office and that kind of stuff. Yeah, the timing of this news is of note because it does, in theory, allow the Hornets franchise to get a jump on talking to strong assistants, right, sure. that are uh, obviously with their squads right now, maybe going through playoffs and stuff like that, to get like to them early here, get in their ears, you know, maybe here in the spring and the summer. And it also allows them uh, the opportunity if – a high-level coach gets canned because of a terrible playoff performance or something mm. like that, and you're like, oh, okay, we'd like that coach to come in here. It sounds like, though, they'll go the route of, you know, a young assistant coach. Woj says Jordy Fernandez of the Kings also coaches Team Canada, just coached them to a bronze medal. People talk highly of Jordy, Jordy Fernandez. They got any Canadians on the Hornets? I don't, really don't think, think so. so. They should. Nope. That's their first problem. Maybe that's part of the problem. Yeah. Uh, Charles Lee of the Celtics, his name always comes up. Chris Quinn, the medicine man himself of the Miami Heat, <laughs> and uh, Kevin Young of the Suns. These are familiar names that you always see here uh, uh, in terms of assistant coaches who might get a crack here. I, you know, it, it, My guess is it probably will be one of these guys, and probably should be with Brandon Miller, Mark Williams, maybe LaMelo Ball if he can stay healthy. Like It's not, it's not a bad like three guys there to start a team around. If they can stay on the court. Hey, you got a point, you got a guard, you got a wing, and you got a center. Right. That's a good start as long as we can get LaMelo out of these raggedy Pumas. <laughs> yeah, see LaVar was blaming the shoes. I think uh, LaMelo should go back to big baller brand. Hey, LaVar Ball. LaVar Ball? LaVar Ball, yeah. yeah. I said it out loud. I was like, that is his name, right? Hadn't thought about that guy in yeah, I know. so He's long. He's back, baby. He's back ripping on the shoes that his kids were in. Maybe he'll coach. <laughs> uh, I'm in Vegas this weekend. I'm putting money on LeVar Ball as the Hornets coach. I'm with you. They should go for an assistant, though. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine a highly sought after coach is going to want to take this job at this point in time. Yeah. It pro- feels like they're going not. the other way right now. And, like, I doubt they would trade LaMelo, but I think it was a great season for Brandon Miller. Like, he really put it together. He's been yeah. playing on both sides. He seems to be sort of the leader for that team just because he yells at everybody else to get back on defense, which doesn't seem like a commitment that anybody else is willing to make. So I doubt they would trade the LaMelo having signed him to his big deal just recently, but it's tough to build a team around a guy when he's not able to play more than 30 games in a season. So we need to see a 60 game season from LaMelo. Hopefully it's next year alongside Brandon Miller. And you can at least see the outlines of a real team. And this, this front office too, like it's completely going to be, well, it's basically now overhauled, right? Jordan sells the team. Cup check's gone, yep. and then, you know, now the coach is gone, yep. so it's going to be the new GM there and uh, new basketball of operations, Jeff Peterson, picking maybe one of these young assistant coaches to, to give him a chance. We will see. See you later, Steve Clifford. Do you think he'll be back? I mean, he's 60, I think, young 60s. As they, uh, like, yeah, you know, know. He's, he's such an old-schooly coach, old-timey coach. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah. I think he's actually a good coach. You don't, I don't think know. so? I mean, it's what, been, ma- what oh, makes you think he is? He's gotten some things out of like teams like previ- his previous Hornets stay, and yeah, it's true. He coached them the last time they made the playoffs well, eight okay. seasons ago. Well, something, yeah, yeah. But I'm like, uh, the Magic, magic got better go. when they got yeah, a new coach. Yeah, that one didn't go well. Yeah. Uh, and then this one, you said it. Like they started trading everyone. Everybody's injured. Like they, I mean, you can't put much stock into these final two years here. Yeah, but this is like this is the team he would get the most out of, right? Like you're thinking yeah, we true. want a guy to come in and set a defensive culture, which is exactly what Jamal Mosley has done with the Magic, yeah. right? Like we play defense, we'll figure out the offense. But it's almost the flip side with the Hornets. They're like we only want to try and play offense, mm-hmm. which obviously doesn't mesh with an old school kind of coach like Steve Clifford. He needs to be an assistant coach on some yeah. good team and, and play his part in them going far. All right, we got to take a quick break. When we come back, worst of the week nominees. Whoa, Mac is back. You ever wish you could have it both ways? I do. Like a zero calorie cheeseburger or staying up late but not feeling exhausted in the morning. Guys tend to think looking sharp means starchy Oxfords and stiff chinos rather than effortless comfort. But you can have it both ways with Mac Weldon. Mack Weldon makes timeless apparel with modern performance fabrics for guys who want to look and feel sharp without sacrificing comfort. From their light as air underwear to innovative anti-odor tees and versatile yet comfortable pants, Mack Weldon has a full range of clothes that never go out of style. I've got some polos, some tees, some undies. 
and I love them. Simple, soft, stylish. In fact, I'm wearing Mack Weldon right now. Mack Weldon clothes are designed to fit your style and the demands of modern life. They look like regular clothes, but feel like the latest in modern comfort. If you told me my silver PK polo was made from 100% cotton, I would 100% believe you. But those antimicrobial silver threads keep me feeling fresher longer. Get timeless looks with modern comfort from Mack Weldon. Go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off your first order with promo code NODUNKS. That's M-A-C-K-W-E-L-D-O-N.com, promo code NODUNKS. Back in the Classic Factory, do us a favor, hit the like button, make sure you subscribe. Podcast listeners, leave us a five-star rating and review. Okay, we are doing the drop, even though it's Thursday, and Trey is taking over for Tass here with Worst of the Week nominees. Ladies and gentlemen, the Worst of the Week. Just loved having this segment back in our lives. I know, so did I. And we got some solid uh, nominees. This week, our first is the Wizards Mop Squad. This comes to us from a game on Wednesday uh, against the Milwaukee Bucks. Had some slippage here uh, in the Capital One Arena. It starts with Jordan Poole and Patrick Beverly slipping on one side of the court. The Bucks go down to the other side. Beverly is obviously a little slow to get up here, so the ball comes back for the Wizards. Jordan Poole is going to try and drive to the hoop, but as he drives to the hoop, he slips on where Patrick Beverly had previously slipped, almost slips into Beverly. Both of these guys had to go to the locker room. That's just bad mopping. Yeah, now do you think a part of it was because Beverly didn't seem to like come into the play on the other end? So the mop squad was like, they didn't know if they were. Can we mop around him or what are we? Yeah. Can we get out there? But you're right, very dangerous. Is Drew Gooden on the Wizards broadcast? I he did. was calling him out. He's like, you got to get there. Well, fair enough. <laughs> you got to get you gotta there. Gotta protect the players. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Do you think maybe uh, maybe the mop squad should be allowed like one timeout per game? Hold on, it, let us clean. Like they can throw a, like a like a like a coach in football throwing the flag. They can throw a towel. And say, Too like, stop, stop it. Stop the play. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let us mop here. Look, it was a quick back and forth. Yeah, yeah. But I still think they could have got it. Yeah, they usually, they're, they're usually They're all usually over very it. fast. So yeah. maybe the Beverly lingering in the lane yeah, I think that's what was the here. problem. Not to make uh, excuses for them. But, but quite dangerous. Very. They did have a nice shot of them on the broadcast very soon after this. Like, they showed all the replays of them slipping. And pools, in particular, look bad. They both did come back in the game, which is good. But uh, they made sure to show us. The mop guy's getting crazy with them. Oh, okay. It, rest are telling here, 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 here. Pointing out all the wet spots. I like, uh, sometimes I'm I'm not convinced those mops do anything. No? You ever think that? I don't know. Because in some spills, either someone spills a drink or, you know, a player down because of sweat, whatever. You see them like, they're like, no, we need towels. And they call in the towels to really sop it up. So I'm like, what, do these mops work? Like I want to, I really want to check the integrity of these, of these mops. And are they all different? Does every arena have the same ones? Maybe it's like a law of diminishing returns kind of thing. Like when, if you have a, a towel for too long, it just gets worse at absorbing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. How often are they upgrading their upgrading mops their or mops. getting new ones? Yeah, we need Pablo Torre to. Pablo finds out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get on. I would love to have like a like a bounty paper towel commercial where like they're like, look at the differences in absorption. For the different kinds of mops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, I just deep in a mop game. I'm always checking on that stuff. Hey, same game for our okay. second nominee here. The Bucks transition defense. Yeah. Against uh, the Washington Wizards gets a worst of the week nominee for me. I mentioned the end of the game one, but this actually happened twice. At the end of the first half, five seconds left. Giannis misses two free throws. Anthony Gill gets the rebound off the miss. Goes coast to coast for a layup. Then at the end of the game, after a Chris Middleton layup. They just chuck a full court pass. Only Pat Connaughton gets back on defense. He blocks Anthony Gill at the rim. Good play to get back, mm-hmm. but nobody else no. is back for the Bucks. They lost this game by four points, Skeets. Ooh, Those are two I just layups. Saw two buckets, yeah. I mean, it ain't that easy, but sometimes it it is that easy. And that to me, you combine that with like back to back losses against the Wiz and the Grizz. They just don't seem locked in right no, now. And no. I'm trying to maintain faith in the Bucks. Like, every time they do something well, I'm like, see, this is a team that can still challenge in the Eastern Conference, could still possibly win a championship. Mm-hmm. But it just doesn't feel 
I don't know. If we did the worried scale, how concerned are you going into this one? I'm at least a level four uh, for the Bucks. They're awesome when everybody's healthy and when the starters are in, but it feels like one guy misses any sort of time and it completely falls yeah. apart for yeah. this team. I think they're 15 and 15 under Doc Rivers since he took over. So very much up and down, very much uh, the Chris Middleton <laughs> Ferris wheel. And what are they like 18 and 20 on the road or something like yeah. that? He just says they're not serious enough. Um, and look, Doc will call out his team. <laughs> we know that. But um, you want to be peaking right now. It's not like they have anything to play for. You know, they are almost locked in the second seed. They could drop, like we said, but it's been a disappointing week for the Bucks. Yeah. it's What's strange about it is that it's a Giannis-led team. You would never think that effort would be an issue or like being locked in like that's sort of like his whole thing isn't it like yeah. i know he's a fun silly guy too and maybe that's it they're just sort of like just hey let's stay healthy let's get chris back into shape you know damien will get him some time off here and, and maybe it is that but like that's not the mo of Giannis that we've led to believe and and i do believe like it's just weird to see it translate and it's like yeah not getting back against yeah. the wizards that's just that's just effort or it's at least like totally attention effort. to detail and it's like come on doc like adrian griffin I mean, like he had more wins, didn't he, than Doc this what, season? He was thirty and thirteen or something like that. Or Is excuse that right? me, I guess what I meant was Rivers already has more losses, right? Than Adrian. Exactly Graham. right. Yeah. Which is weird. Maybe Joe Prunty is the answer. Yeah. Get Joe Still in around. There. Maybe Steve Clifford is the answer. <laughs> Put him on the bench. <laughs> They'll have him getting back. <laughs> yeah. uh, I guess Giannis has been playing through injury too, but. Oh, he's playing fine. He's playing fine. <laughs> uh, I, he might have had his worst game uh, recently against the Grizzlies uh, mm-hmm. last night. So if he's going to be playing, they got to get more effort from everybody else yeah. as well. Otherwise, just rest him. Get him ready for the playoffs if you're going to be losing these games anyway. Yeah, anyways. true, true. All right, our next Worst of the Week nominee, the Wemby Game Ball Saga. I'll be mm-hmm. honest with you. I don't know who to give the Worst of the Week to probably, on this probably one. Probably Joe Dumars, I, I guess. I think so. But. That's a long time ago now. The Spurs beat the Knicks in a classic game. Wemby went for 40-20 and 20 to take down Jalen Brunson in his 61 play point night final play of the game long pass Wemby steals it and then just chucks the ball in the stands ended up getting fined $25,000 by the league Wemby said I know players have gotten fined for throwing the ball in the stands before but they did it with bad intent I was just doing it to make somebody's day yeah we can't legislate emotion out of the games what's what's the what's the problem what's the issue I think uh, the fantastic six trophies podcast were throwing out the idea could the ball hit a baby is that what we're worried about? Because otherwise, what's the big deal? <laughs> Give the fan a fun souvenir, a or they can even throw it back. Now, I would like to say, I came on after that show or after that incident, and I said, because I heard or I read from Brian Windhorse of ESPN, that it wasn't a big deal because the Spurs ball boys went and got the ball. And I guess, you know, got it to either Brunson or mm-hmm. the Knicks or whoever wanted it. Um But then I heard Windhorse say he got a text from the Spurs ball boys that said, that's not true. We did not go and retrieve the ball. So I don't know what to believe anymore. I don't know if the ball went home. I don't know who has the ball. And I don't know why this matters. When you throw it in the stands, if you're the home team, and he had a big play and a big game, and he literally gives somebody a high five with his giant alien hand, and then chucks it into the stands joyfully, what's the issue? Just trying to make someone's day. Like, uh, you think it's J- is it because Jalen Brunson wanted that ball? But I, I, he hasn't said anything about it. No, he, yeah, <laughs> he I'm care. convinced he didn't want yeah. it. He's like, it came in a loss. He's a winner. Uh, even though 61 is amazing, but it, they have just like it's a, a hard line rule they've come up with. Like, that ball cannot go in the stance. I don't care if you're doing it. Yeah, because you're happy, because you're set, because you're angry. You can't do it. It's gonna cost you 25,000. But I think it's silly. I would like to know what happened to that ball. Did somebody catch it? He said I was trying to make someone's day. Did he have someone picked out? <laughs> throws it, goes right to him. I don't or know. Did he I just saw Caitlin Clark throw the the game ball to her brother. There Be- you go. Beautiful pass. Yep. Right on the money. I didn't hear the NCAA double NCAA uh, finding her. Right. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> That's so true. Maybe so, if you know who you throw it to, it's oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. They're That's just holding it for me. That's my family member. Twenty five k for chucking a ball in the stands. Jeez. Jeez. I think he's got it though. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be fine. All right, this one, uh, we're calling it almost worst of the weekend. It goes to 
the Ken Garf Automotive Group. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ken Garf sounds like an owner of the Hornets. Yeah, no offense, Ken Garf. Uh, this is an almost worst of the week, though. Ga- Jazz Cavs Wednesday night. They called this threes for keys promotion by the Ken Garf Automotive Group. <laughs> you got to hit three threes in the allotted time. The guy made the first two, then missed four from the corner, then chucks up a three, hits his last one from the buzzer. Buzzer goes off while the ball is in the air. Sure. Splashes through. As we all know, if you shoot it before the buzzer, it counts. Right. Unfortunately, they say no car. What? Crowd boos like crazy. So they're saying because it didn't go in before? I guess so. That was the, the ruling. A lot of time. Wow. You can see the guy here is like giving the double thumbs down <laughs> to everybody. He's like, no way, man. The crowd went crazy when he made it. Wow. Like, it's exciting to see somebody win one of these promotions. I just saw a guy hit a half court shot uh, to win 10 grand. It was cool. It's always great. People pop like crazy. So. He, hit ten, he hit three NBA threes with a hat on. With a hat on. <laughs> uh, in whatever it was, 60 seconds. Like, you should reward that. And it was. It was clearly good before the buzzer. Clearly good. Yeah. But this is why it's the almost worst of the week, because they came back out. Jazz Bear did a video review. They lit the light. (laughs) They signaled to Steve Javi. Wow. And they gave him the car. Yes. They said it counts. We're fired up. Let's push each other. Let's chest bump several times. Let's go. This is literally a scene out of semi-pro. Yeah. Corn dogs, Jackie Moon. (laughs) You know, the panic that was going on in the Ken Garf automotive group chat or office or probably suite. They're probably at the game in a suite. Pandemonium. They were like, what do we do? What do we do? What are we doing? This is bad PR. We've got to give them the car. Can we give them the car? Uh, And they made the right decision. You had to give them the car. Had to give him the car. Third time this season, somebody's won a car for this. <laughs> oh, well, maybe that's why they didn't want to count it. <laughs> that's so good. Garf Automotive is going under, man. Giving the cars away. Like yeah, that. exactly right. Like, it's not just NBA players who are better three-point shooters. It's NBA fans now. Give me three... <laughs> Three Jazz fans have made three threes within 30 or 60 seconds. I don't know what it is. That's pretty impressive. Uh, So, Ken Garf, you saved yourself. Wow. I feel like it was Ken himself who made that call. You think so? No. Give him the car. Yeah. We got a lot on the lot. Yeah, Ken called Nobody's buying right now. They got got Chevys, Chryslers, Fords, Hondas. They got it all. Wow. At Ken Garf Automotive (laughs) in Salt Lake City. Yeah, I'm big Ken Garf of fans over here. Yeah. Unfortunately, I do have to add another worst of the week nominee, which is coming through uh, the oh, wires right don't now. Do that Skeets. To me. It's from uh, Adrian Wojnarowski tweeted, breaking after two months of rehabilitation to attempt to re- a return to the New York Knicks, oh. all NBA forward Julius Randle will undergo season ending right shoulder oh, surgery. That sucks. Terrible timing. Yep. That's what a real the- worst of the week. I thought he was playing tennis. He was playing tennis. He was on his way back, it seemed like. Man. Brutal, brutal. So he is done for the season. They're just electing to have surgery. Now. Yeah, having surgery. I guess there was talk when it happened. Will he be having surgery or will he yeah, rest was. it? And they obviously wanted a chance of Randall actually coming back for the playoffs. So they gave it a go. They so, gave it a go. And now, <laughs> and end, now he's done. I mean, I guess in the end it didn't really matter. If he had had to have gotten surgery, would he have been able to return this season? That's probably the thing is if he had surgery when it first happened, he likely is out. Yeah, for the rest of the right, season right, anyway. Right. So they tried to get him back, but it obviously didn't go well enough. I mean, if we still don't know what's going to happen with OG I was either, gonna, yeah, I was right? Say, like they're when's changing that his injury designation, and he came back, then he got hurt, then he's now back out again. Um, so maybe Josh Hart was right. Maybe they aren't coming back, and it'll be a pleasant yeah. surprise. We know Randall is done. That's too bad. And then OG, I guess, is a question mark. But. This Knicks team has been playing pretty well uh, with the guys that they actually have. So Can Jalen Brunson Bad drag timing. them yep. to a couple playoff series win. Can the Villanova Knicks do mm-hmm. it here? Okay, that sucks. Yeah, they need OG back to obviously make sort of any uh, any noise in the postseason. But, oh, brutal addition to worst of the week yep. there. Uh, who are you ultimately giving it to with your nominees? Remove the Randall one because that one just sucks. Yeah, I'm giving it to the Bucks. Okay. Left a bad taste in my mouth. Okay. Bucks. You got to get back. You gotta get You're trying point. to win a championship. You got to get back on Anthony Gill. Okay. Yeah, it's true. Anthony Gill. You got to put a little sweat into stopping Anthony That's Gill. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Can't just roll over for Anthony Gill. All right. We got to take one more break. When we come back, rapid fire fun. Don't go anywhere. If only starting your fitness journey was as easy as starting this podcast. That would make me so happy. The truth is all the lift big, get big, and beach body ready in three weeks pressure stops most of us from even starting and starting is what matters most it's everything really it really is 
Wherever you're beginning and wherever you want to be, Peloton encourages you to just start. With thousands of classes to get you moving and doing what you can, if that's a 10-minute low-impact class, they got those. And when you're ready, take it up a gear. You know, a 30-minute live DJ ride. DJ John Michael, that guy plays the hits. He always gets me going. Start with Peloton and find instructors that will keep you motivated to stay on your fitness journey. Learn the basics and build from there. Remember, doing something is everything. Get started with a Peloton bike or Bike Plus rental at onepeloton.com slash bike slash rentals. onepeloton.com slash bike slash rentals. Terms apply. So Julius Randall out for the remainder of the season. They is electing to get uh, shoulder surgery to take care of that. I was just reminded that Randall in the summer of 2023 had ankle surgery. So this is two consecutive summers here, yeah. spring slash summers, where he's actually having to get surgery. Last year, off uh, last year the off season ankle surgery, and then this year, obviously the shoulder sucks for Randall, who was having a monster season, twenty four nine and five. He was an all star, yeah. just uh, you know shooting really well, was stringing it together. But you can, I mean, look, the Knicks, the Knicks are going to be in te- uh, you know, as long as they keep OG and sign him, which we think they will, they're still going to have basically their same team. Mm-hmm. So they got to look a little ahead to uh, next season. And, and of course, they're still in the playoffs this year. All right, before we go here, because it is the drop, we got some rapid-fire questions that are never all that rapid. I'll ask them. I'll answer them with you guys. First one, the Pacers social media team asked their players an important question this week. What's the appropriate temperature to start wearing shorts? Tyrese Halliburton, <laughs> who was wearing shorts in the clip, Said about 65. Must have been about 65 that day. Uh, a bunch of guys thought around 60, and good old Canadian boy Andrew Nemhard said 20 degrees Celsius. <laughs> oh, JD, how great was that to oh, see an NBA player say my, Celsius? Oh my god, I, I just I loved it. I, I loved, loved it, it. Loved it. But question is for you guys here: When does shorts season officially begin to you, TK? I feel like our answers might be skewed here, living in the South, where it gets warm in, like, February, and you can start wearing shorts. So Hmm. I had to throw it back to my Midwest days. Okay. When it would start turning towards springtime, I would watch the Weather Channel on the 8s, looking for a 50 anywhere in Illinois. If I saw a 50, (laughs) shorts on. So, So you're in Plano. And if you saw 50 in any other part of the state... St. Louis? <laughs> East St. Louis? It's 50 degrees? <laughs> Rockford? Then you were good to go. Yeah, I'm like, hey, it's 50 somewhere. I'm, I'm putting on shorts. 50 is too soon to start wearing shorts, I would say. That's pretty chill. But when you're young, you'll wear shorts anytime you can. Oh, I, I knew a guy in Toronto, JD, your friend. Yeah, Scott. I never saw him wear pants. He never wore pants. <laughs> True never. story. The, never saw that man wear pants. And he rode a bike to work every day. He go, once got he once got pulled over by cops on his bicycle. Because they thought something's wrong. He's, with this this guy. guy, there's something we gotta. This it's a wellness drunk. check. Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> it was a blizzard. <laughs> you know, twenty below shorts. This guy. Now his whole thing. He says he had no pain receptors in his leg. Wasn't That's, that his thing? Oh, uh, that yeah, yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, fascinating. <laughs> I do feel like my legs get less cold than the rest oh, of my body. Oh, yeah, same. Percent. Hundred percent. Why? I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, it's I don't weird. know. It's weird. I, I mean, I feel like I could almost wear here. You could almost wear shorts year round. You really could. Probably. Yeah. yeah. You'd be chilly a handful yeah. of days. The laundry day, I'm definitely wearing shorts yeah. in Georgia. And Trey, my answer is exactly the same as yours, but 10 degrees Celsius, which is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> 10, 10 Celsius <gasps> is 50 Fahrenheit. Yep. Which um, again is fairly chilly. It's chilly, it's cold. but yeah. I will add one caveat. It has to be sunny. Ooh, so yeah, it, the yeah. sun shining, ten degrees. I think you're you're fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my answer to this is when does short season officially begin? Is whenever Tass rolls into the classic factory <laughs> wearing shorts, the first yeah. day of the calendar year when Tass comes ball. in mm-hmm. rocking shorts. I'm like, oh yeah. It's like seeing that it's first Robin. Season. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's right. Tass's legs are like seeing the first Robin. That's right. That is spring is here. <laughs> When I see that Greek man's legs. So that's my answer. Which is probably, what would you say? He probably pulled it out. I would say 15 uh, Celsius. Celsius. So yeah, yeah, you ever get so. like 60. Yeah. yeah. About that. Yeah. Sun's out. Sun's Big out. Big part of it. Big part Gam's of it. Gam's out. Gam's out. All right. Next one here. Lots of talk recently about the play-in tournament. Can the Suns 
climb out of it. Well, they just did. Can the Sixers do that? Can the Rockets get in the thing? Can the Bulls and Hawks decide who's hosting the play-in game? It's playing this, it's playing that, but I want to know, what's something that's played out? How about that pivot? <laughs> that's great, man. Yeah? It's all playing. I want to know what's played out. I was racking my brain on this one. Uh, and I think the thing that's played out is dropping a whole season of shows at once. Hmm. Good one. Oh. I love a weekly release. Episodic. Got it going right now for Shogun. Got it going right now for X-Men 97. Okay. What a throwback to the olden you days like of it. waiting and getting anticipation yeah. and being excited when you see there's a new episode of your favorite show coming out. It's nice to like have a week to talk about the show too. Yeah. Like to dive into the theories and yeah. whatever, get on the Reddits or get on Twitter and you know, talk it out a little and bit. And you don't feel like you're way behind on something. Yeah. Like, you know, if they the whole thing comes out and people are watching it in an entire weekend or like, well, I guess this one's just not for me. I'm not gonna be part of the conversation. But when it's spread out, you can easily fit in 45 minutes here, 30 minutes there. I, I, I'm I with you on this because also when it's all released and yeah, you're loving it. Oh, let's start another one. And then that ends. Oh, let's just go into another <laughs> one. But that's like, that's like binging on anything. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, it's like just have endless supply of chocolate. Like I'm just going to keep eating it. Yeah. I just got my girl, uh, girl guide cookies. What do you call them here? Girl, girl scout, scout cookies. Scout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Girl guide in Canada. It's a Celsius Fahrenheit thing. <laughs> um, we're guides up there, not yeah. scouts. Um, but, uh, and I cracked open the box and I'm like, here we go. I can't stop these adventure fools. They're too good. But what if you could get girl guide cookies delivered three per day? Perfect. Perfect. Wow. Not too much. You're not a little labor intensive, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Pair it with my socks coming once a day. Just put socks and cookies. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I like it. But anyway, that's a great one. So uh, played out. Yeah. Dropping an entire season on any of these platforms. Yep. All right. What do you I, got, I agree. Uh, mine is super petty. Okay. Um, I, you know, I got onto the internet and I was like, I struggled a little and I was like, what's played out? What's, <laughs> what are we all sick of? And I, I, all this stuff was coming up and I was like, you know what? Let, let the people have their fun, you know, like let them, <laughs> let them do their thing. But there was one thing, and this is jumping into no buffs. I'm sorry, everybody, but okay, be careful. No spoilers. No spoilers here, but mismatched socks. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't like it either. I don't like it, <laughs> especially the funky socks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're this cool. They're cool designs and stuff, which are kind of played out as well. But yeah. just seeing two mismatched funky socks, <laughs> even if they're the same color ish. I, it just hurts my eyes. I just can't. So who was doing this on Survivor? This well, Mariah and oh. Liz does it, yeah. um, who are kind of the same person a little <laughs> bit, which doesn't help. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't know why. Like, you, there's a like a cinematic shot, you know, of them. They're walking into the challenge, and Liz is up front, and she's got two different socks <laughs> on, and I don't know. It's, it's just like. It's supposed to be cin- cinematic, but it just looks like, I don't know, Napoleon Dynamite or something <laughs> sure, coming at me. Sure. Not that's a terrible example, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's totally just, like that. it's too, too much quirky. for my, it's too quirky. Okay. Too, too quirky. Okay, good answers, guys. Uh, as for myself, something that's played out, paying someone to do your taxes. Mm. Ooh, I'm over it. I'm done. This was the last year I paid anyone to do my taxes. Yeah. They're not hard. And I used to do them. I don't know why I stopped. I think I got in my head, oh, now I own a house. Now I've got investments. Oh, that's going to be too many numbers for Skeetsy to figure out. It's not. It's not hard. Just yeah. do one of these TurboTac things or whatever. You just plug them in. They does it for you. Yeah. And it's like a fraction of the cost. Yeah. That's the other part. You're like, I couldn't believe how much I like, had to pay my accountant to do it or right. whatever, my tax specialist. Yeah. Like, what? That took you five seconds. <laughs> yeah, but you're thinking they know tricks, right? I know, but they're not um, yeah. showing me the tricks. And I don't think the they're tricks. doing tricks because there's no tricks to do with my books. You can't cook them. You can't cook them. Yeah. <laughs> you're, I'm you're, board, man. you're super simple, though. You're just, super simple. It's just like, what, what are you going to write off some dog toys? And, you know, <laughs> and, like, you and can't. I'm not doing that. That's too much work. Like, exactly. It's like, whatever. Just tell me how much <laughs> I owe. Write off some yeah. dog toys. No, you're right, 100% right. <laughs> so I'm doing them. doing them next year. Yeah, the, it's the foreign country thing that gets to me. I think I got scared about that. Yeah, I, I'm still scared. I'm like, oh, they're going to, oh, what happens? They're going to, the IRS is going to be on me. Yeah. They're going to kick me out of the country if I if I mess up. Yeah. I better pay someone to do it. Yeah. First off, they don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to be doing something illegal for them to care. Yeah. So I'm fine there. And this is not hard to do. It's the what the hell factor. 
Like, if you get audited or they send something back, you have somebody to go, hey, what the hell? <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> there, is an, there, is, there is an out. Right, yeah. exactly. But, but the I don't know, is it worth like that so much money? so little. Yeah, you're you, right. You watch. I'm going to do my taxes next year. And then, sure enough. <laughs> Full audit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We got them. <laughs> oh, no. We've oh, been no. waiting for this. <laughs> All right. Uh, final one here. The Sabrina versus Steph three-point contest was a highlight of All-Star Weekend in Indy. And with the 2025 All-Star Weekend in the Bay Area, Shams is saying there's talk of the contest evolving into a two-on-two -two competition, potentially with Caitlin Clark joining Sabrina and Clay Thompson, or Oakland native Damian Lillard uh, joining Steph Curry. So that's pretty fun. That'd be a nice uh, sort of um, extension of that event. And we know that Commissioner Silver has hinted at just straight up axing the All-Star game. This yeah. guy's over it. He's fed up. <laughs> The NFL did it with the Pro Bowl. Maybe the NBA will do it with the All-Star Game and just say, you know what? Let's explore other competitions, sort of like the Pro Bowl has done. Mm -hmm. So, with that thinking, what unique event would you like to see added to NBA All-Star Weekend? You can get as crazy as you want here. What do you got? I want a trick shot contest. Okay. I, while Luka Doncic is in the league, I don't... I mean, horse was boring to me when they brought it back, and it was just like, who can shoot the farthest threes? Everybody can yeah, do that, that was, right now. Yeah, yeah. But Luka... And Jokic, during practice, like when they were just messing around, shooting shots like from half court, shooting bounce in shots. We obviously have seen Luca make one off the Jumbotron and he just hit like the 20 foot finger roll. He had a crazy lefty scoop yep. that we didn't even talk about uh, this week as well. I would like to see what they can pull out. I don't know how you would judge it necessarily because I don't want to be like, can you match this? Can you match this? Right. Or else rating him doesn't seem to make the most sense either. So I kind of just That's kind of just issue. want it to be practice where <laughs> they're just doing cool shots and making right. them. Honestly, um, but like with bigger spotlights on it. It's they should do. I mean, it's horse what you're saying or the yeah. trick shots. But like the problem is doing it live. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. But it would be it could be incredible if like you put these guys in a gym for an hour and a half and you film it. Yeah. And then you produce it. Right. And you get the best of the best and some of that. Um, but then, of course, it's not it's not live in yeah. the arena for All-Star yeah. Weekend, so that'd be a little weird. But What if it was like yeah. rhythmic gymnastics where Go on. you were just given a ball, you're given a song, you have a set of... <laughs> a set of uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you want to dunk? Go nuts. If you, you want to dunk, you want to do like nuts. a half-court shot, you want to do off the scoreboard or whatever, and then you just finish the song. You, you can incorporate costumes, dancers, whatever you want. Just put on a show put for a three show. minutes. Right. And, and I guess we judge it. And routine. you judge it. You yeah. got Shaq, you got uh, Reggie down there. Well, you, you know, and you're, they're just judging. You know, you get get uh, Brian Botano down there as well. I don't know. Some, <laughs> <laughs> a Russian gymnastics judge just yeah, to foil everything. Oh, yeah. You got to get a guy from Dude Perfect. <laughs> yeah. You got to get oh. Shaq and you got to get a figure skater. Okay. <laughs> they know. Okay. <laughs> okay good idea. Uh, I like it. Is that your, I mean, as you sort, no. of, like, sort of tweak that answer. You got well, I, uh, yes, in a way. So here. I think that they should get rid of the the game okay. itself. Game gone. Everyone loves a parade, and we're going to warm I hate cities. Parades. No, every, I know. <laughs> I hate parade. You hate a parade, but most people love a parade. Yeah, true. Okay, so you do like a final style parade, right? So you know, hey, these are the all stars. You trot them out because that's the biggest thing about the all star game is it's just like, like, wow, you're an all star. Here's a guy, and here's a, he's an all star. He's seven time all star. Cool, yeah, and just all the graphics and all that stuff. Okay, but it's a parade, and it goes into the arena where what's waiting for them sort of hunger games is not 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 deadly or anything but yeah. they don't know what's going to happen so they get in there and this year cornhole okay right or bag of first slam ball or oh, they don't know the event they don't know and it, so you still feel the arena so they, they the bus literally comes in and it's, and it's like darts. Guys, we're doing darts, curling, yep. all drinking stuff because they're going to be drinking on the bus anyway, you know, like oh. Marc Gasol style chugging wine and stuff. <laughs> Loosen them up yeah. a little bit. <laughs> Roller derby. Whatever. Pickleball, of course. Oh, you for one, your way. Yeah, of I course. I have to throw it in there. Five minutes <laughs> to say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, with the, with the, but with the you know, parade let's in. see what they do. Or, or the, the trick shot contest. It'd be a great unveil. Yeah, like, yeah, you exactly. Know, I, you ever watch the show uh, Physical 100 on yeah, Netflix? Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they do the great, like, they don't know what it's going to be, right. and then they show them, and they're like, oh. 
Yeah. Uh, who can so hang be cool. the longest? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. yeah. I just started season two of the Korean. Movie. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you watch it in the original or uh, do you dub it? I, I don't dub it. Yeah. The like, dubbing's kind of funny. Yeah, but we tried but... it, and and Nora can't stand it. Yeah, I can I, I like can live either. with it a bit, but I'll I'll read the yeah. I'll read the subtitles. Yeah, no. It's yeah. such a funny show, though. It. <laughs> it's so funny. But I really <laughs> stop and think about it. And the Korean part, I love. They're so kind. The first episode is my favorite when they all come in one at a time. Yeah. And they're all like, oh, that's like a judo master. <laughs> yeah. and like, oh, look how big that guy oh, is. Yeah. I love that part. Uh, okay, great answers. Mine's sort of similar to yours, honestly, JD. I just went with, like, carnival, carnival games. Mm. So ring toss, balloon darts, um, the one where you use the mallet. To hit the yeah, target. Yeah, yeah. I don't That's even know what cool you call one. that thing. You could obviously include the basketball shootout part yep. with uh, you know, the rims are, are, are tiny smaller, rims. tiny rims, and they're at stupid heights. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you could even put like Commissioner Silver on a dunk tank. Hell yeah. <laughs> and then maybe like hit 10 Absolutely. threes in a row or something, like get him involved. <laughs> yes. So, you know, because they're all, they're all seem to be angry that they're at All Star Weekend. Right, exactly. So, uh, make it take fun. Take your anger out on him. <laughs> dunk him. Dunk him. Or dunk to dunk. <laughs> the dunk contest. Ooh, wow. well, that'd be pretty cool, actually. You <laughs> dunk a ball, and if it's goes, if it goes in, it you, you, yeah, commissioner gets dunked in a dunk tank. <laughs> All right, few ideas, free ideas for <laughs> you there, Commissioner here. Silver. Uh, use any of them that you want. Just uh, give us some. Uh, you know, yeah, let, invite us to the game at yeah. the very least, yeah, or, or celebrity the game maybe. Celebrity game. There yeah. you go. There you go. All right, that's rapid fire. Not so rapid. That's the drop on a Thursday. They said it couldn't be done, but we did it. I think it was a classic, but you tell us. Leave us a five-star rating and review. Podcast listeners, hit the like button if you're on YouTube. Subscribe. Share the show. Thanks, everybody, for helping us hit 100,000 subs on YouTube this week. Big achievement for your boys. Reminder, coming up a few hours, no buffs. Talking about mismatched socks (laughs) on Survivor there last night. Episode 6, we'll break it all down. And then tomorrow, premiering at 10 a.m. Eastern on our YouTube page, you'll get the podcast right around that time. Handle with care a film session about this great basketball documentary, Tass and Trey talking with the two directors there, Jeremy and Kirk, uh, about this doc. So I can't wait for that. That's tomorrow. And then you and Tass will be back on Monday. Yes, indeed. With some NBA weekend winners and losers. I will not. uh, I will hopefully be okay in Vegas, recovering (laughs) from a marathon that is quite downhill, guys. Elevation drop. Very scary. Elevation drop? Yeah. Oh, like yeah, you're running down a mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am yeah. running down a mountain. You In think fact, you're gonna uh, win? Yeah, because I'm gonna tuck and roll. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic style. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, I don't hit anything. Rings are gonna come popping. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's 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 uh, quite the drop. And you know, I said this. It's gonna be quite cold. It's gonna be like I'm gonna be wearing shorts, of course. Yeah. But it might be like 30 Oof. at the start of the race. At the top. In this Warmer desert mountain I'm on. Yeah, so anyway, I won't, wow. be, I won't be here Monday, but the guys will be. So help them out. Join them. Suggest your NBA weekend winners and losers because there's a lot of basketball on this weekend. we got the Final Four in both the men's and women's tournament. It's WrestleMania this week as well. <laughs> Two-night event. Oh, my God. Saturday and Sunday. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, holy, what a we weekend. We got some Final Fours wait, coming. Wait, wait, somebody's going to hit eight home runs in the Mets Reds game because <laughs> my buddy Grish man. is there. It's going to be a crazy weekend in the sports world. So, join the guys uh, on Monday. Thanks for joining us here. Until all of that, Clipper Bro. You heard it here first. Have a great time. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And, Skeets, we got confirmation. Tass has left the boat. He left the uh, boat. He left the boat. <laughs> He went to a beach. Went to a beach. In the Bahamas. Yeah. And he got sunburned. Wow. <laughs> so if you if you put money down on Tass's going to a beach at minus 115, wow. feel free to collect. Wow. And I guess Worldwide Wob was right. The sun, the most dangerous. <laughs> Quite dangerous. <laughs> Tass <Tassos>. So dangerous. <laughs> Wear your sunscreen this weekend, okay, everybody? Embrace the weekend, people.